Hi, my name is Dr. Doug Jackson and welcome to the Meet Your Brain portion of this Community Resiliency Model Overview Training. Now in this video, we're going to put together a very simplified model of the brain using our hand as a model. Now in this model, let's imagine that your arm is your spinal cord and that this fleshy bit beneath your thumb is your survival brain. Now the survival brain takes care of all the automatic stuff. Breathing, heart rate, digestion, wakefulness. And it's a really good thing that it does take care of that because imagine how tedious life would it be if you had to tell yourself, okay, heart beat, heart beat, heart beat, breathe, heart beat, heart beat. I mean, it would just get really confusing. Now, most of this stuff is beneath consciousness, but some of this stuff is kind of tweeners. You have control, but you don't have control. Take breathing, for example. You can control when you breathe in and when you breathe out. Up to a certain point. If you tried to hold your breath, it would start to burn and it would become really, really difficult. And ultimately, if you succeeded in holding your breath long enough, you'd simply pass out. And when you passed out, this survival part of your brain would go, I don't know what the crazy person is doing, but we're breathing again. So it would just take over. So that the automatic stuff in your brain is handled by the survival brain. If we tucked our thumb into our palm, we'd have a representation of the emotional brain. Now, the emotional brain is in charge of emotions, but it's also in charge of motivation. It's where memory starts. Although stuff that the emotion brain creates is stuff that we often think of as being consciousness, most of what the emotion brain does happens before consciousness, which is kind of weird. Now, there's one particular part of the emotion brain that we want to pay attention to, and it's called the amygdala. And the amygdala are two almond-shaped structures kind of in the center of the brain, kind of like right if you somewhere between your ears. And um, it's your body's fear sensor. It's what goes off when it senses something is in that you're in danger and it charges the rest of the body to swing into action to protect itself. And it happens very fast, and it happens before consciousness. Dan Siegel, who we shamelessly stole the hand model of the brain from, tells a story about going for a walk in uh, the Sierra Madres, west of Los Angeles, with his son. And he says they were walking along, and all of a sudden he stops dead in his track, and he's got his hand thrown out to the side. And it's only after he stopped and his son has stopped, only at that point does he see the snake 10 feet in front of him. Well, that's our buddy, the amygdala at work. The amygdala and the amygdala's buddy, the thalamus, sensed that there was danger and sent out the signal to the rest of Dan's body to stop and to protect his son before he consciously even knew there was anything dangerous about the environment. And that's something that's important to realize about the amygdala. It's very, very fast, and we all would probably be dead without it. But it's not especially accurate. If Dan had seen a rope left in the middle of the trail instead of a snake, the amygdala still probably would have gone off and gone, stop everything. If we wrapped our fingers around our thumb, we'd have a representation of the thinking brain. Now, the thinking brain is probably the part of the brain that you think of when you think about having a brain. This is the part of the brain that's in charge of rational thought, cognition, moral reasoning, language, facial recognition. Actually, most of the processing that happens around vision happens in the cerebral cortex. But there's one part of the cerebral cortex that plays a really important part 
of why resiliency works and when resiliency, when we get knocked out of our resilience zone. And that's the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is right above your eyes and right behind your skull. In other words, if you do a face plant into your windshield, this is the part of the brain that you're going to destroy. So wear your seatbelt. At any rate, the prefrontal cortex is that part of the brain that's able to evaluate the danger signals that were sent from the amygdala and integrate information from the rest of the brain and figure out the context of that danger and how severe that danger is. And if the danger is not as severe as the amygdala's first best guess said it was, this is the part of the brain that says to the rest of the brain, calm down guys, it's actually not that bad. So you see how there's a conversation that goes on between your emotional brain and your thinking brain that helps to keep you in the resilient zone. But, and this is the big but, when you are emotionally overwhelmed, the signals between your emotion brain and your thinking brain become disrupted. You literally flip your lid. And so when we are really emotionally overwhelmed and the signals from the emotional brain and the thinking brain get disrupted and that conversation stops, that's when you're most likely to get thrown out of your resilience zone. When this video is over, think for a moment, if you're willing, about the dumbest things you've ever done in your entire life. And try and think back and remember when you did those dumbest things, were you calm, cool, collected, and totally rational, or had you flipped your lid? Which brings us to the subject of trauma.